As more and more information comes out about the current state of AAA gaming, I think it's pretty safe to say that the industry as a whole has been pretty much taken over and infiltrated by activists pushing the woke agenda. Now I've gone and pointed out in several videos that these individuals, these activists who have gone and infiltrated gaming were nothing more than college students during the time of the original Gamergate. Now these individuals have gone, they've graduated, they've made their way into the workforce and they've brought their ideology with them, which is the reason why we're seeing that the AAA gaming space is completely rife with wokeness right now. And it's also the reason why they go and hire these companies like Sweet Baby Inc. as well as Black Girl Gamers. Now, early in the week, we saw this coming from BBC Games commentator Jules Hardy. Can we get that for round two of this? It can be the final purge of these kinds of gamers. The one thing I always find very funny about the people who claim that they're for diversity and inclusion aren't necessarily for inclusion. And the language that she's using is very fascist sounding. And remember folks, we're the ones that are supposed to be the baddies. It makes you wonder if she's looking for a solution that could be potentially final. But in all actuality, I merely just wanna point out the hypocrisy coming from the people that say they wanna be inclusive because they are not, because they cannot tolerate ideas that are different from their own. And that the only diversity that they really care about is really just skin deep. However, if you have the right skin color, but not the right opinions, you get ostracized, much like what we saw happen with gothics and black girl gamers. Now, it was also discovered earlier this week that this page coming from Microsoft.com says, help customers feel safe. Incorporate stories and themes from marginalized communities or emerging markets in a relatable way. Customer challenge, having a story told is a universal human need. But for many in marginalized communities or in markets outside the U.S., it's rare to be represented in media, let alone games. And as a result, some people could feel like a secondary customer for our content. Now, me personally, I feel if there is a underrepresentation or an opportunity in the market, then rather than go and force people to change and live up to your ideals and your expectations, maybe you should go and create your own material, whether it is a movie or a TV show, and in this case, video games. If you feel that certain people are being underrepresented, go and make your own game rather than going and cajoling others to do it for you. Business impact, 80% of media consumed by the world is created in the US. And yet most media, including video games, don't contain characters and content that align to that broader customer. Now, there is a false equivalence that just because something is created in a certain country, that doesn't mean that people outside of that country or culture can't relate to that content. There's plenty of movies and entertainment that come out of Korea and Japan that people love watching because it tells great, compelling stories. And just because the character doesn't look like them doesn't mean that they can't relate to that individual. Now, a good example of this is the Squid Game TV series that was on Netflix. It came out of South Korea. And obviously, I'm not Korean, and I did find enjoyment from that show. And the reason why is because ultimately, it told a great, compelling story filled with great characters. And the same thing goes for the movie RRR. So I find statements like this to be a complete non sequitur. And I find that all it does is it just puts limitations on creativity. Don't go and follow your creative vision. You must follow our creative vision. Research shows that players prefer to play characters that look like them and are more likely to purchase and play experiences where they align with the character's identity. Now, I'm only gonna speak for myself here, but when it comes to picking a video game, I don't base it off the identity of the main character. I base that decision off of, does the game look fun? How are the game mechanics? What is the play like? Is the story any good? Is it dealing in concepts that I find interesting and potentially entertaining? The reason why I ended up playing Ghost of Tsushima was because it was being played in the background of It's a Gundam's videos and it looked like a fun video game. So I actually went out and I bought it because of that. Not because I identified as the individual that is the main character in the game. So I'm not exactly sure where they're getting their research from. The issue with research is yes, 
Yes, it can be manipulated. You can definitely cherry pick your results as well as who you determine to go and interview based off of these questions. Because if you go and you target a certain demographic, I'm sure you can get the results that you're looking for. 50% of players in the broader gaming market didn't play certain games because the games weren't made for them. Over half of the global gaming market. Okay, so let's break this down a bit here. That seems awfully vague because yes, there's definitely games out there that were not made for me and I'm not gonna go play them. Animal Crossing is a really good example of that. Also, Candy Crush seems to come to mind. There's definitely a large amount of games that are just something I'm not interested in because of either the genre or the type of game that it is. That has nothing to do with identity though. It has to do with the type of game and the style of game that I'm either interested or not interested in. And I'm sure this applies to a lot of people. 53% of developers felt diversity in storytelling should be a priority and it was ranked as the third most important factor in industry growth. I wouldn't be surprised if this number is actually accurate. As I pointed out, people have been invading the games industry for years now, and obviously they have brought their ideology with them and it's the reason why they're pushing for more diversity because they see there is a problem in gaming and that it needs to be fixed. 41% of retailer customers have shifted 10% or more of their business away from brands that do not reflect their values in identity and inclusion. And again, I would like to know where they're getting those numbers from. Okay, I see right here. Looks like they are using these websites as a reference for those numbers. Here we are. We are now at the questions to consider section of this page. And in a lot of ways, I kind of feel like what these questions are, they're setting up for going and hiring a DEI company like Sweet Baby Inc. or Black Girl Gamers or whatever's out there at this point. Are you telling new stories or sharing new perspectives within the product experience? Do you all of your characters slash players depictions look the same? What steps have you taken to ensure characters are represented respectfully and authentically? How have you validated assumptions you have about your audience to check for blind spots or unintended stereotypes. And again, this seems like they're kind of pushing for go and hire these DEI consulting companies because they can help you answer these questions and ensure that you do not unintentionally go and use stereotypes. Would you feel proud to show a member of a community how their culture slash character is represented within your experience? And these questions are kind of weird like this one. How are the wide range of customers depicted within your product, content portfolio, and communications? This is something I don't understand. Why does the customer need to be depicted within the game? I don't need to be depicted within a game to want to go and play it, as, as I've stated. What I'm looking for is a story I can relate to or something that looks potentially fun. The reason why I ended up going and playing a game like Sekiro was because of the stupid controversy surrounding the game's difficulty by games journos. I wanted to try it out and it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed the game. And again, this is a game that takes place in feudal Japan. I'm not seeing myself in this game, but I enjoyed the hell out of it because it was a fun video game. And that's what playing video games is supposed to be about, having fun. What processes have you used to validate how different groups of people or cultures are represented in your experience? And again, this sounds like a push for the DEI companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and Black Girl Gamers. Okay, so here's the juicy stuff. Are you reinforcing negative gender stereotypes? Let's go and explore what they have here. Are you unnecessarily introducing gender and gender barriers into your code or design? Into your code? What, what the hell does unnecessary gender stereotypes or barriers have to do with writing code. That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, this, this one's really stupid. Are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers? Are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their task? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? Okay, now we're getting to the um, characters like Eve are problematic because she's too attractive and she wears very tight clothing that shows off her curves. I'm offended. Okay, here, here's the issue I have with this. There's this thing, it's real, called sexual dimorphism. It is the actual physical differences between men and women. And we're not talking about just genitalia here. We're talking about things like bone length and density, muscle mass, etc. The very things that physically set men and women apart that has nothing to do with their sexual organs. 
This is something that archaeologists use to go and identify the sex of an individual based off of their skeleton, because there are actual differences between men and women, such as the pelvis, as well as the long bones, that sets us apart. And ultimately, what they're trying to attack here is the male gaze. The idea that you can't have sexy women and wearing sexy clothing. In reality, it's, it's a war against beauty. That's what this is, because in Marxism, you can't have beautiful things. Okay, here's an example I'm talking about. Just take a look at Alyssa Marcante. She is one of the senior editors over at Kotaku, and she is someone who goes out of her way to make herself look unattractive. And I, I simply don't get it. I, I really don't. Oh, I'm just fighting the patriarchy, the male gaze, so I'm going to make myself look as unappealing as possible. And I wonder why I'm single with a bunch of cats. Because yes, when it comes to playing a video game, if I have the opportunity to go and make my character a giant fat fuck, I'm going to. Said literally no one. Except for male feminist and Kotaku writers. If I'm playing a game where I have the ability to go and customize the character, I pick a female and I give her the hugest rack I can possibly can. Why? because I like nice things. When the story allows, do you show male characters who display a full range of emotions, including joy, sadness, and vulnerability? Because we can't have strong, stoic male characters that are in control of their emotions. They have to be weak, sniveling, and cowardly. That's what they want. They don't want strong male characters anymore because ultimately at the end of the day, what they want is weak men. Weak men who are easily controlled. What percentage of screen time on-screen presence, speaking lines, heroes, is held by different genders slash racial identities. Now, a lot of the issues is that when it comes to games that are, I would consider to be like historical fiction that take place uh, either during the Middle Ages or a time period where there isn't a whole lot of multiculturalism, this point is, really is irrelevant. I mean, again, what's, I'm gonna bring up Ghost of Tsushima for, as an example. This is a game that takes place in Japan and all the characters are Japanese with the exception of the protagonists, which are a part of the Mongolian horde. And, and therefore you're not gonna have representation. You're not gonna have black people. You're not gonna have white people. You're not gonna have Hispanic people. So I, I find this to be rather absurd because it really is dependent on the genre. Now, if we're talking about New York in modern times, yeah, sure, knock yourself out. There's a lot of diversity in New York, but not in feudal Japan or Northern Europe during the middle ages. Do you have a process to review key decisions with the lens of helping customers feel seen Sweet Baby Inc., Black Girl Gamers, wink, wink, wink. We have consulting companies for you. Okay, and now we have these steps to achieve it. I'm gonna skip the first two because they're kind of a nothing burger, but we'll get to the third one here, which is create and surface content that depicts diverse characters, stories, and creators. So one of the easiest ways of basically solving this problem is when it comes to a character creator. When you have the ability to go and create the kind of character you want to play, be it male, female, black, white, whatever, you have the ability to go and create your own character that looks like you if you are so inclined. And that, in my opinion, solves the majority of the problems here. And again, not all games need to have a character creator. It just depends on the narrative, obviously. Stellar Blade, don't have a problem with the female Asian protagonist that looks really hot. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to play the game just because of that and because there's such a controversy around it. They're basically going to go and Streisand this video game into success, which I find absolutely hilarious. Create playable characters that reflect the broader population, review how identities represented on screen, gender identities, races, sexual orientations, ability, status, age, and body size match up to the broader population. This is the thing I don't get. Video games, much like most of entertainment, are fantasy. I don't need to see myself in it. I don't want to play a fat dude. I, I like beauty. I like beautiful male and female characters. I want them in my game. I want ripped dudes that look badass. I want hot females that look badass. That's what I look for when it comes to playable characters in a video game. I don't care about the rest. I just want to have fun. Again, that's the key word here when it comes to games. People do this for fun. And if your game is not fun, it's not going to be a success. Review how identities represented in your products, such as gender, race, sexuality, nationality, culture, ability, age, size, compared to the broader global player population. Again, that's fucking irrelevant. It really is. Be intentional about which identities are present and highlighted according to what is right for your product and market. Make sure that characters are not tokenized or stereotyped based off of their identities. No person or character can be monolithic to represent all people within that identity. Okay, guys, 
No more toothless rednecks that can't speak, okay? It's a gross stereotype and it's very harmful. Don't use it in games. Practice inclusive casting for any talent required to bring representation to life in your product. And again, it doesn't take into consideration like if you have a game that is set in feudal Japan, are you really gonna go and cast a bunch of black actors to voice Japanese people? I mean, I suppose you can. As long as they're able to go and pull that off, I honestly don't care. Validate your execution for your inclusive listening system. What the hell is inclusive listening system? Here we go, folks. This is what they're talking about, listening systems. Consultants slash advisor councils, user research. Yes, they really are pushing for DEI consultants in that last bullet point. So I'm curious, if game developers don't go and follow these steps, does that mean that Microsoft's gonna not allow their games on their platform? I, I'm curious, because ultimately, what these rules do is they suck the very joy out of the marrow of entertainment. The whole purpose of playing a video game is to go and have fun. And you cannot put guidelines on fun. And ultimately, what these guidelines do is they simply just go and police the creative process. You're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that. You need to be more inclusive. What, what happens if your game doesn't have the ability to go and be inclusive? Many things I point out throughout this video. If it's set during a certain setting where there isn't the diversity that we have in the modern age. If it's not set in a metropolitan area like New York City where there is a lot of diversity. If it's set in Sweden in the 1200s, it's not going to be that diverse. At the end of the day, if there is a deficiency in the market, like I pointed out, Go and create your own stuff. If there is not enough representation of black people in games, go and create your own game. That's all you need to do. Put your money where your mouth is. Don't go to these other companies and force them to do it. Do it yourself. But we all know they can't do that. The reason why is because they're talentless hacks. And the only thing they can do is just latch on to other companies like a parasite and drain them of their creativity because they lack creativity themselves. So go out there and create games like Validate. I honestly, I don't care. But ultimately, what's gonna drive success is whether people go and buy the game and play and have fun doing it, which I seriously doubt they will. At the end of the day, what's gonna happen is that this is gonna go and destroy AAA gaming, and it's probably gonna cause the rise of more indie games out there and in indie studios that they're gonna come and go and take their place. Anyway, folks, that is my take. What is yours? Leave a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Go and check out my next video coming up right about here. And I'll catch you next time.